Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today it's time to talk about one of the most important issues facing the series as we know it, which is of course the true power of Nami's happiness punch. Don't even pretend that you've never thought about this. And we've left this topic untouched for far, far too long, and quite frankly, I think it's almost pointless to engage in any discussion regarding power or strength or just general combat without having an acute understanding of this particular technique. An understanding that I'm sure will be no problem for you, dear viewer, given how intelligent good looking and willing you are to subscribe to the Grand Line Review. The latter point of which will grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Sounds good, yes? But Happiness Punch is a pretty shockingly powerful ability held by Nami, and fans of my previous videos will know that I have, in all seriousness, labeled Nami as one of the most potent sources of raw power within the crew. Although you may have thought that I was talking about the Climb Attack, quite specifically the Zeus Augmented Climb Attack, but in any case, you would be wrong because Nami may very well have something even better. And as a result, we are here to analyze just how destructive this ability is in comparison to other well-known powers of devastation on this planet. But if you're currently asking yourself why we're doing this in the first place, then hello, you must be new here. Welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and I mean everything One Piece. So let's get right into it with a basic explanation of how Happiness Punch works. Now to the amateur untrained eye, this technique consists of Nami dropping her towel and exposing herself, causing those within viewing range to collapse due to a fearsome nosebleed. And just in case you're unfamiliar familiar with Japanese media, nosebleeds are kind of like a narrative shorthand for arousal. The theory is that arousal increases blood flow, eventually reaching a tipping point, and as such, viciously releasing through the nose holes, which is actually quite important because I suppose the theory behind targets being knocked down is due to blood loss, which we have seen an extreme case of with Sanji immediately post time skip, although this was not the result of happiness punch. Thankfully, that is, because if it was, then Sanji would most likely be dead. But the first time we saw happiness punch in action was during the Alabaster Arc, where King Cobra rather questionably revealed the location of the women's baths, despite the fact that his 16 year old daughter was in there at the time. And that's right, pre-time skip Vivi was 16. So just remember that the next time you see those swirly boob things. But from here, Nami decided to reward and or punish those who decided to peek in, thus activating her happiness punch and sending everyone flying back onto the floor of the men's baths. And in addition to this, she also charged each individual 100,000 berries for the experience of being hit by this deadly attack. Meaning that happiness punch does have a secondary feature as a financial generation tool, which will be important maybe to this discussion slightly later. But for now, this might not seem like a lot. However, there is some very key information to take away from this initial performance. Firstly, like I said before, happiness punch is a Nami exclusive technique and requires her soul activation, which you might think has entirely to do with her body. However, that is not true. And we do know this because at the very beginning of the Alabaster Arc, a certain Bon Clay turned himself into a Nami clone through his devil fruit, the Mane Mane no Mi, and as is common in One Piece, he then proceeded to expose her body in a very similar fashion to that of Happiness Punch. And while it did have an effect, it was certainly not the knockout blow that Happiness Punch is capable of. So this is important to note because it becomes apparent that the uh, visual imagery the move generates is simply not enough on its own. And it does require Nami's intentional activation to achieve full effect. Speaking of full effect though, when it comes to examining such power, there is a spectrum of discrepancy at play here because in the Alabaster example, Happiness Punch was able to knock out everyone. However, this is not the case in our second instance where this technique was utilized on Wano. In this case, only one individual was actually knocked out, which was predictably Sanji, sneakily using his stealth black raid suit to be present in the bathing area, which was kind of redundant because it was a mixed bathing area anyway, so he could have just, you know, gone in without any issue. But back to the point at hand, we didn't actually see anyone else knocked out by Happiness Punch, not in the manga anyway. We saw people with nosebleeds, heart eyes, and etc., but not the sheer power that was showcased on Alabaster. I should should say that in the anime adaptation, people did fall down unconscious, but it was still an inconsistent effect because many remain standing and staring and not just women either. And we should also be clear about the situation here as well because this happiness punch was aimed directly at a member of the worst generation being Basil Hawkins. So with that in mind, one can assume that Nami was not holding back in any way and thus using happiness punch to its full potential. Rather annoyingly though, this scene is kind of weird because we never actually see the reaction of Hawkins. He basically just vanishes for a bit whilst we focus on Sanji and then Hawkins Hawkins reappears next to Drake. It's a really, really weirdly structured scene. And I suppose that that's what happens when joke attacks are used against such prominent characters. Oda kind of had to make Hawkins disappear because what else can you do? One option would be to have him affected by happiness punch and thus diminishing his status in this otherwise incredibly serious arc or to have Hawkins be unaffected by it in which case he just easily captures Nami. Neither situation was particularly great for what Oda wanted to do with the story. So I guess we just make Hawkins disappear. Ooh. But happiness punch did still prove to 
be incredibly effective, although it clearly operates on a scale. And there are many people in this world who are going to be entirely immune to such an attack. And weird enough, one of those people would be Luffy. However, this is a bit strange because in both Alabaster examples of Nami's true happiness punch and Bon Clay's imitation punch, Luffy was affected just like everyone else. But then much later on in the story, we have a scene on Amazon Lily with Luffy seeing Boa Hancock bathing and he has zero reaction whatsoever. But this inconsistency would go on to be explained by Echiro Oda in the SBS of volume 54. I believe that Luffy reacted to Nami's naked body twice in volumes 18 and 23. And both times it happened, Usopp was with him. He's the suspicious one. In other words, when Luffy is alone, his reaction is what it was with Hancock. He's interested, but he's not entranced by her. But when he's with Usopp, who's the same age, it's like a kid on a school trip. His bad side comes out. Yeah, both sides of Luffy feel right to me, so the culprit is definitely Usopp. So basically, Luffy is susceptible to peer pressure and will generally act the way his peers do. But in a say one-on-one -on -one situation, he would be completely immune to the power of Happiness Punch. And having mentioned Amazon Lily, though, this does bring up another striking parallel between Happiness Punch and Boa Hancock's Marimaro abilities. They both have um, similar prerequisites for use, being the lustful nature of the target in question. Although Happiness Punch tends to be a lot more violent, whilst Boa Hancock simply turns people into stone. There is something to be said for the element of surprise though, because even if Happiness Punch is an arguably weaker version of the Mera Mera no Mi's powers, it is a more unexpected attack. For example, Vice Admiral Momonga knew to act swiftly enough to avoid being entranced by Hancock, whereas I'm not so sure if he would have taken someone like Nami as seriously, and then when she drops her towel, it would simply be far, far too late. Mini Momonga would activate, and Happiness Punch would have landed. And I think the other appropriate comparison to make would actually be to Conqueror's Haki. Both Happiness Punch and Conqueror's Haki serve a very similar purpose, which is to knock out huge legions of dude bras, and furthermore, they both only offer an effect on the more weak-minded individuals of the world. They just attack different features of personality. Conqueror's Haki is a direct assault on willpower, whilst Happiness Punch attacks physical desire. And not only that, but Oda himself has also been posed the question of which of these techniques is stronger, which he answered in the SBS of Volume 74. I see, hmm, this is a tough showdown, isn't it? Well, let's see, if we were to talk about these two using their techniques with their own bodies alone, Nami's Happiness Punch would work only among visible range, so it would probably not be able to compete against Luffy's Haki. However, if we are allowed to take the usage of visual Denden Mushi into consideration, Luffy's Haki will not be able to convert into willpower radio waves, but Nami will be able to attack various locations around the world at once, and thus victory would become Nami's. Nevertheless, it should be noted that Happiness Punch also deals a great amount of damage to one's wallet, as it requires the payment of 100,000 berries per person, and in this way it can be confirmed that this attack is a great deal nastier than Haki in general. So there you have it. Purely comical confirmation from the author himself that Happiness Punch is at least more mean-spirited than Conqueror's Haki. But hey, it's cool to know that with the use of a visual Denden Mushi, Happiness Punch retains its full effect. The same cannot be said for Conqueror's Haki because you do need to be in range to feel it. So right now, I'm imagining a situation where Nami was present at Marineford and in order to stop the war, she decided to invoke a global Happiness Punch, affecting everyone currently viewing the battle and quite probably becoming rich richer than all of the world nobles combined through the sheer amount of financial debt that the world would owe her. But as for who Happiness Punch would be most effective on, well, it's obviously the uh, more perverted types in this world. Sanji has come up a lot in this discussion, but it's also worth flagging Momonosuke as a clear candidate given his, his tendencies. And I suppose you could also add Brook into the mix, but it is highly debatable over whether or not he would actually be affected, primarily because he has no blood. So if Happiness Punch is based on knockouts via blood loss, then Nami using the technique on Brook is about as effective as NL using lightning on Luffy. And furthermore, Nami would almost certainly make the NL face, having met her natural counter. But it would also be quite effective against the not perverted, but more shy about this sort of stuff types. I mean, for example, Drake on Wano was almost knocked out by the sight of seeing a random woman in a state of undress. So I could see Happiness Punch having a pretty major impact on him. The hardest people to tell are those like Zoro. You know, the stoic focused individuals who act like they have no interest in the greater world, but they very clearly do sometimes. And so I suppose what Zoro has going in his favor is general disinterest. I mean, I think he was the only one on Alabaster who did not peek into the women's baths, which means that he has a keen sense of avoiding danger. But that doesn't mean that he would not be affected if danger found him. However, I guess my main takeaway from all of this, if indeed there is one at all, probably not, but it's that Happiness Punch is a very specific move that doesn't have the great area of effect that say the Merimeru no Mi or Conqueror's Haki are able to achieve. Those two abilities do not discriminate. They strike just about everyone. Happiness 
Venus Punch also isn't quite as strong as either of them, with Conqueror's Haki fully knocking people out and the Merimerinami completely immobilizing them. However, Happiness Punch in the right situation is still pretty extraordinary, especially considering we were introduced to it long before the other abilities I mentioned. This was the original Crowd Sweeper and in the first half of the Grand Line, as well as likely all four blues, and yeah, even most of the New World, this attack is still going to yield incredible results. Another one of the many reasons why Nami is heavily underrated by the world government when it comes to her bounty. But that only works in her favor because her comparative lack of notoriety means that nobody ever expects to be struck with the happiest attack in the entirety of One Piece. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.